Hi and welcome to the vlog. I'm Tova. I'm here with Eileen and this is Parent XP and nice to have you with us. If you are new on this channel, this little beauty that I'm standing with here is uh, a girl with quadriplegic cerebral palsy and a lot of neurological issues and other conditions that come with brain damage that she suffered at birth due to meconium aspiration. I'm her mum. I also have a four and a half year old girl who is currently with her dad, so it's just me and Ellen today. I have been trying to record a vlog on how to clean Ellen's feeding tube extensions, or not just Ellen's feeding tube extensions, any feeding tube extensions. This is my third attempt, because the first time I got no sound, and the second time I got no zoom. So let's hope that we're third time lucky. I'm gonna do this on my phone, I'm going to be pausing as I set up in between the various stages and moving the phone and then hopefully I can just post this without having to edit <laughs> because this is just this is just that vlog that is it's so not happening <laughs> some vlogs are like that they just don't want to happen but anyway Eileen has a feeding tube she doesn't eat orally and she has what's called a mickey button uh, which you can't see at the moment but I will um, pop in. I will pop in a photo. She just says, having said, I don't want to edit this. I will show you her Mickey button in a minute when I move the camera. But these are the two tube extensions that we have. We have a thin one for milk and water, kind of for just plain fluids, and we have a thick one for her food she's on blended diets so we puree we i well her dad does it as well but dad and i are not together um i puree the food that i cook for myself and alice and then i push it through this tube as puree and i asked in a blended diet forum on facebook how people best clean these tubes and i got a lot of interesting answers so i thought i'd collect them all in one blog and give you the five Five tips for cleaning feeding tube extensions. Hey Eileen, shall we show them your Mickey button? I'm gonna lift Eileen's top up. And here is her Mickey button. It's got a tubey pad on it. And you attach the tubes, the extensions to the button. It can open up like this. And you attach the extensions when you feed or give fluids. Well, there's nothing like aiming a camera on something to make you think, oh, that needs a good scrub. Okay, so my feeding tube extensions are here. My soapy water is here. Tip number one for cleaning feeding tube extensions is actually don't bother. There are some people who really don't bother cleaning them because they reason we had a peg before we got the Mickey button. You don't actually clean the peg uh, tube. You just flush it and then use it again. And therefore they don't bother cleaning the tubes more than flushing it through with water and then um, using it the next time. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to use soapy water and an empty syringe, pull your water up, attach it to your tube and simply flush it through. If the tube's very dirty, you can pull up, suck, push, suck and push a few times. And I think this is the most common way of doing it. So again, Soap and water into the syringe, attach it to the tube, and push it through. And if it's very dirty, suck. Whoop! <laughs> and push a few times. <laughs> and then after that, rinse. So that's tip, tip number two. And then I'll just put it to the side and I'll leave it to the side. Tip number three, if you have given quite greasy food, and I mean, in, in my case with Eileen, she has quite calorie dense food, so there's often a lot of fat in, like we'll cook lamb or um, pork and, and have quite a lot of solid fats in, and they may get stuck in the food, in, in the tube. So tip number three is all about getting that extra grease out of it. So make sure that the tube has some soapy water in it, and then you use the clip, Take a clip up to the top, hold it. I can't pull it if it's closed all the way, but then my hands are, are pretty 
painful at the moment as you can see by the kinesiology tape that I had on before or have on but you can't see now because of the glove and then with the clamp almost closed you just pull it down and then twist it and sort of semi close it again and pull it up and that way you work off any greasy residue that might be in the tube tip number four is to clean the threads around here. I've heard of people using pipe cleaners, which I think is brilliant. Personally, I don't have pipe cleaners, but I have these tiny little brushes. I've got a set of three of them at TK Maxx, and I use one of these to get in, get the bristles in, and just clean the threads of any food that might be stuck in the threads. And finally, for cleaning the feeding tube extensions, tip number five, if you need to, is to put it in a sterilizer fluid. Here in the UK, we have a cold sterilizer called Milton. You, it can be bought as a fluid, it can be bought as a, a tablet, you dissolve it in water. And some people whose children are very immunocompromised or need very, very clean and hygienic stuff, they just put it and let it soak in Milton afterwards. And while I'm here, I'm doing this, I'm going to give you some bonus syringe cleaning as well, which is literally when you've sucked and pushed through the tube, you can do that with a syringe and then you can go in with a tiny brush, clean the threads, clean the top and rinse it off and put it to dry. Where do you put the syringe to dry is something I have seen people asked and let me show you a couple of ideas yikes there really is nothing like pointing a camera to surface uh, to make you see how badly it needs cleaning i sort of very very super quickly wiped off my surfaces here right drying the syringes personally i just chuck them in this um in this washing up um what do you call it uh bucket and let them dry there but I know that some people actually prefer to put the syringes on a rack this rack here it came with this and as you can see yes it's Joseph Joseph and Joseph I know some people are gonna laugh people have seen more of my videos because I'm pretty obsessed with this brand um, but yeah you can put the syringes like this Lakeland also do one of these but with much taller um, pokey bits that's the technical term, right? Uh, which is really good for drying syringes, and I've seen a lot of people using it as well. And then you can just put these like this and dry if you want to. But as I say, personally, I chuck them in here. It works for me, and I usually tend to wash up my syringes when I wash up the rest of my dirty dishes, so I need this for plates. Well... I finished the rest of my washing up as well. Eileen's sitting here laughing at me. Hi, girly. Hi, girly, 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 girly. You a happy girl? Happy child? I'm a happy child, mommy. Fantastic. We have a few more chores that we need to tackle today. One of them, really urgently, is to make a new blend for Eileen because she's out of food and it's nearly lunchtime. So I might go out into the garden and dig up a potato or two and see if I can make something with that. Do you want that? Homegrown food today. Can we try some homegrown food? Yay! I want homegrown food. Oh gosh, she's so cute. Anyway, so those were my five tips for cleaning the feeding tube extensions and a bonus syringe cleaning as well. I hope you found that useful. As always, thank you so much for being here and watching my videos, and we will see you again very soon. Take care. Bye bye.